Hello, my name is James Bruce here with MakeUseOf.com and this is my quick video review of the Oculus Rift Development Kit version 2. We're also giving one away, so be sure to click through to our site to enter the competition. The DK2 can be purchased directly from OculusVR.com for $350, which I should note is $50 more than the original DK1, which was released last year after a successful Kickstarter. Now in terms of overall design, you can see that not a lot has changed, but actually there's a lot of improvements under the hood. Most significantly is a much improved OLED screen with 2.25 times as many pixels, and it's low persistence, which means that turning your head no longer causes everything to blur, something which contributed to VR sickness when using the first dev kit. The image on the screen is also a lot more vibrant with higher contrast. I really can't emphasize enough how much better games look this time around. The higher pixel count doesn't quite eradicate the screen door effect, but it certainly makes it a lot easier to forget about when you're actually playing. The other most significant change is the addition of positional tracking. With the previous dev kit, only rotational information was available, so any movement other than this was ignored. This also led to a lot of VR sickness, when people would lunge their head forward or duck down, and not get the appropriate movement in-game. The dev kit 2 solves this by adding an array of high-intensity IR LEDs around the front of the device. You can't see them because infrared isn't a visible wavelength, but this low latency tracking camera that's now included can. Now when the headset moves, the camera reads the information of where it's located, and you get a more appropriate movement in the game. It's a huge improvement that really adds to the level of immersion. In the Tuscany demo, for instance, you can peer over the balcony, lean around a corner, or bend over to look closely at something on the floor. But remember, it's a new feature, so existing games need to be reprogrammed to support it. Just a few days ago, a new version of Minecraft, the VR mod for Minecraft, was released with preliminary support. There's a beta of Made for Oculus, gritty cyberpunk thriller Techno Lust that also supports positional tracking. Or if you're a fan of the Elite Space Combat series, you'll also be pleased to know that if you drop the princely sum of 60 euros on the Elite Dangerous pre-order, you'll get a DK2 beta version too, which is apparently rather good. There's really no point in me talking about games though, because there's something new or an update released literally every day. So anything I do tell you will be completely outdated by the time this review is published. What I can tell you though is that getting a demo to work properly is a lot more difficult now. With the DK1, it was basically a simple process of cloning your screen. But with the advent of version 0.4 of the Oculus SDK, Oculus has turned the Rift into another device, rather than a secondary display. This is a crucial step to releasing a consumer version that's really easy to use, but it means that demos need to be recompiled and basically nothing is compatible with the new Direct to Rift mode yet. Thankfully you can easily disable that with the help of the unofficial Oculus Service Manager utility, but the process to get each game working still varies wildly. Some you need to set the Rift as the primary rather than the extended monitor. Some you need to start the game on your regular desktop then move things over to Rift. Some require you to start them by pushing the launcher window over there and then making it full screen and then... Ugh, in short, it's a bit of a nightmare. And unless you're prepared to put in the time to get them working right, you're going to be pretty disappointed for now. That said, when it does work, it is glorious. It finally feels like a consumer-ready product. The quality of the display is so much better and it's no longer a case of, whoa, this is awesome, but now I kind of feel a bit sick. Getting your VR feet is a lot quicker and motion sickness is a lot less prevalent. So what's the verdict? Should you buy one? Well, if you've got the money and you're a hardcore fan of virtual reality, then go ahead. If you held off on buying a DK1, then I'd probably hold off a bit more and save your cash for a computer upgrade too, when the consumer version is finally released next year. This thing is even more demanding than ever, and if your computer can't produce the minimum 75Hz refresh required, you're going to get a stuttering image. The software side of things needs a lot of work, but that's okay, that's to be expected. Remember this is still a development kit. Now if you'll excuse me, I'll be heading back to Minecraft to extend my castle with a new sunroom.